If you know someone struggling to get started in open source contribution, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Richard Schneeman, creator of CodeTriage.com. Every time I talk to developers, I hear the same open source myths over and over. Myth one, if I try and fail, then it's just all over. People think if they don't succeed on their first contribution attempt, they'll never succeed. This is false. Let's talk baseball. The good baseball players bat 300 or above. This metric is out of 1,000 and essentially translates to them hitting one out of every three pitched baseballs. If they can do that, they're doing pretty well for themselves. I bring this up to point out that even professionals can't hit every ball. Just because someone is successful doesn't mean that they're not failing two-thirds of the time. I enjoy speaking at conferences and have spoken at 31 conferences in 17 countries, but to date, I still write abstracts that fail to convert into talk acceptances. On average, I get about one in three accepted. Essentially, I'm batting 300 with my talks. I want you to know it's okay to fail. In fact, it's expected and part of the process. Myth two, working in the open is terrifying. Okay, working in public is scary. Public speaking is commonly cited as a major fear. Working in open source is less like being on stage and more like being in a mall. Sure, people can see what you're doing, but usually they're too busy to notice. If you make a mistake, will people see it? Yes, but everyone else is there making mistakes too. What if I make a mistake and a maintainer yells at me? What if I make a mistake and people make fun of me? The reality is that even getting a maintainer's attention and response can be a challenge. Sure, I've seen maintainers be curt or short with replies because they're busy, but the reality is that 99% of maintainers want to give you a good experience and anyone else doesn't deserve your time. It does take confidence to work in open source. The good news is that the more you do it, the easier that confidence comes. But even people who have been in the arena for years still have to put in the work. Myth. Three, I'm not experienced enough. This is the idea that other people are smarter or better equipped. Absolutely a myth. I've also heard, what if I open a PR and everyone sees I'm a fraud? This fear is so common, it has a name, imposter syndrome. It's hard for you to see the value you bring to the table because it's hard to see what others don't know. Even if you're just getting started, it doesn't matter if the other people have more experience or not. In fact, too much experience can lead them to filling in gaps accidentally. Have you ever written something, then when you go to read it aloud, you find you missed a word or added an extra word? But wait, didn't you just proofread it on the computer? When you did that, your mind automatically filled in what you knew should have been there. The same thing happens in open source. People with more experience have trained themselves to miss sharp edges and fill in knowledge gaps. This is also known as the curse of knowledge. Open source needs people of all skill levels and perspectives. Open source needs you. Myth four, it's too overwhelming. I don't know where to start. Starting in open source is hard. Know what else is hard? Flossing. A proven technique to start flossing is to floss one tooth a day. That's it. Don't try to get fancy. Show up and floss one tooth. If you're consistent, one day you'll notice that you want to floss the rest of them. Start small with open source. Read one issue. That's it. No pressure. When you're ready, you'll find a drive and want to do more. Okay, this next one. I love this. I hate this. I hear this all the time. I need to wait for a good first opportunity. Everyone wants an issue labeled good for beginners or good for first timers. If you can find one of those and knock it out of the park, great, do it. But I've got two problems. What's easy for the person who tagged the issue might not be easy for you. Even if it is, even if it's a commit served on a silver platter, then what? If you don't know how to find contribution opportunities, then you're left at the mercy of someone else finding, filing, and tagging those issues for you. The reality is that just getting to the point where a change is easy can be very hard and consumes the majority of open source time. Contribution opportunities come when you are looking for them. Remember, floss one tooth. By being active and engaged, you can find your own contribution opportunities. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, be on the lookout for my book, How to Open Source, coming soon.